All right, welcome to MCIX Tech Tips. Today we have Dylan from Corsair, and I'll let him introduce himself a little bit. So the first question is, who are you and what do you do? My name is Dylan Rhodes. I'm the Director of Marketing for Audio at Corsair. Okay, well that was really easy. That was um, far less complicated than I made it sound. And why are you here? What are you telling us about? There's a big hint right here. Well, uh, I guess I'm talking about the SB2500. Its full name is the Gaming Audio Series SB2500. It's a high power 2.1 PC speaker system. All right, guys. Dylan is succinct and efficient, so you guys are going to get a lot of information in the next few minutes here. So the first question today is, why did Corsair branch out into engineering audio products? Well, as you can imagine, Linus, at Corsair we're a bunch of enthusiasts, and with the state of the, uh, the PC speaker industry for the past several years, there's, we just found there's, there's nothing out there that, that we'd want to buy. So we were in the luxurious position of being able to design the speaker system that we all wanted to own, but just wasn't on the market. Okay, and so what technologies have you guys been looking for that really weren't present? Uh, where are you guys looking for your inspiration? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because in the, the home audio and the home theater space, there's all these technologies that are very commonplace, but they've become sort of a lost art in the PC speaker space as PC speakers get simpler and simpler. So this is an effort to basically bring PC speakers up to date. That's right. Now let's get this out of the way right away, and that is... Who should buy this product, and by extension, who should be paying attention to this video about why the SP2500 is so innovative? And I'll give you a few examples of user groups that may or may not make sense. So the first one would be home theater users. Why or why not? Well, if it's a home theater in terms of a large living room where you're going to be uh, several meters away from the screen, well, the SP2500 is certainly loud enough to fill the room, but we have unapologetically de designed these as... PC speakers, they sound best when you're between one and two meters away from the, uh, the speaker. So, as strange as it would say, uh, these would not be my, my first choice for an enormous home theater experience. Okay, so what about, for example, then, a guy who is sitting in his computer chair? He's at his computer, but he wants to, you know, watch anime movies or watch war movies or uh, listen to music then. That's exactly who he had in mind, the, the guy who, or, or the gal who enjoys entertainment on their PC and they're, they're sitting right in front of it. Okay, what about peer gamers then? Because you hear a lot of peer gamers say they don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on an audio solution, but you guys are actually marketing this, even though you say it's great for multimedia and music, as a gaming audio solution. Well, that, that's a fine point. Uh, we've designed this to be the reference standard in PC audio, and by that, it's going to sound accurate, it's going to sound clean, it's simply going to sound great no matter what content you're using. But I want to be clear that there's, uh, there's some other speaker systems in around the price range where they're going for a more general purpose audience. Nothing really out there aimed at gamers. What gamers want is they want particular attention to the bass. They want it to be clean, tight, and accurate. Uh, there's some concern when you say it's, a, uh, it's the best gaming speaker system that we're using gaming as a qualifier, like we're saying, well, I'm the most talented Spice Girl. But it's, it's the best gaming PC speaker system because it is the new reference standard for PC audio. Okay, now here's a couple other sort of finer points, and this is what if there's someone who lives, say for an example, uh, in, in a dorm, and they're going to be out in a couple <laughs> years, okay, so they can't really take advantage of the subwoofer. Do you guys, ha would you recommend buying something sort of crappier now and then upgrading to this later, or give yourself some room to grow into it? Well, the, the 2500, I, I think your audience knows that when you have a really good PC speaker system, it's a long term investment. It's something that you're going to keep through. Uh, through two or three system builds, and we may have had, all had an experience where we bought a cheap piece of, piece of speaker, and <laughs> when we, when we uh, replaced the system, it's like, hey, let's try something new. The SB2500, uh, it's a long-term investment. So the, the, the guy in the, uh, the, the dorm room, well, unless he wants to get beaten up regularly, uh, he can just put it in late-night mode or turn the sub down. Uh, this sounds really nice as a stereo 2.0 speaker system. Uh, when he gets his MBA and uh, gets a high-paying job then in his own, own house, then he can, he can turn that subwoofer up. Perfect, perfect. And then this is something we actually discussed in our pre-prep, so yeah, I wouldn't normally ask this question, but would you recommend this for game developers who are looking to design the audio experience of their game? Well, actually, we're already talking to game developers about getting these into the studios. When you're, when you're the audio designer for the game, you need a reference standard. You need to design something that's gonna. You're gonna you need you need the right gear. 
That's why you have audio monitors. You can think of this as double, doing double duty as audio monitor for your PC. So it looks like Corsair is targeting a very broad audience for these speakers. What were the design objectives that you guys had in bringing this to market? Particularly, let's look at each part of it individually. So what about the sub? Well, the subwoofer, now it's, uh, when we looked at a lot of PC audio, speak, PC speakers, it's, it's really easy to design a subwoofer that's big and loud and boomy. But, you know, it, the really tough part is designing bass that's tight, clean, and accurate. Too many PC speakers out there, the, the subwoofer is a, a, a giant fuzz box. And while that may be enjoyable for the first 30 seconds, when you're listening to a really well-recorded piece of music or... Or, or film or whatever, you're really going to appreciate having that very accurate bass reproduction. So Corsair designed this speaker setup to hit, obviously, a very broad audience. So what were the design objectives that you went after with respect to uh, making this a balanced system? And I'm going to kind of ask this question in a few different parts here. Let's start with the sub. What makes it special? Well. When you're designing a subwoofer, it's really easy to build one that is big and loud and boomy. And that's the problem. So many PC speakers out there, the subwoofers are pretty much fuzz boxes. The really tough part, design one that, that's loud, but it delivers clean, tight, and accurate bass that really rewards you when you're listening to high quality audio. Okay. So the sub delivers clean, tight bass, but what about the satellites? What did you guys do in order to make them complement the sub better? Well, the, yeah, there's a lot of technology in the satellites, I'm, I'm glad you asked. First of all, the most obvious thing to notice, when you're designing a reference quality PC speaker system, which we've done here, uh, you can't get away with full range drivers. These are two-way satellites. They have a, a separate tweeter and mid-range. But uh, the more important thing, perhaps, is that they are what's called bi-amplified. Now, bi-amplification is very common technology in the, uh, the high-end home audio space, but it's kind of a lost art in the PC speaker space. What it means is uh, the tweeter and the mid-range each have their own dedicated amplifier. Uh, what that prevents is uh, the distortion you'll get when uh, the crescendos and all the loud noises and everything is coming at you. One of the drivers may uh, starve the other driver of power when you have just one amplifier, giving each one its own amp takes care of that problem. Okay, cool. And what do you guys need to do in terms of balancing it with the subwoofer in order to make sure that you maintain good positional audio? Well, a lot of PC speakers, when, particularly when they're using full range drivers, is they have the sub take of more of the low end uh, than it should. And uh, that's an easier way to design it. You don't have to put as much work into the, uh, the satellites, but it can really wreck your positional audio. Uh, even things like male voices, some things in the low mids that the audio designer intended to be in the left channel or the right channel, the sub will take care of it. Not the way to do it. You design the sub to do its job, which is do the low frequency effects Design your satellites to have uh, a nice full frequency response. Now you talked about the amplifiers, um, but let's go a little bit further into that. How many amplifiers does this entire setup have? As a matter of fact, it has six, amazingly enough. Uh, it, at its heart is a ultra-efficient power supply. Of course, Corsair knows power supplies very well. Yeah, I think Corsair released a power supply once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that drives six Class D digital amplifiers. There are two bridged Class D amplifiers in the subwoofer driving 120 watts. Uh, then two more each in each of the, uh, the satellites driving each driver. Okay, and another thing that I wanted to mention really quick, uh, or wanted to ask you about really quick, you need to mention it, is the DSP. So uh, we're going to have a look at the control pod here and we'll explain one of the cool things you can do with the control pod because of the digital signal processor in the SP2500. Right, the DSP is the, the heart of the system and it lets us do some really cool things. First of all, uh, traditional speaker systems have what's called a crossover. It's a basic piece of circuitry that that uh, separates uh, the, the low sounds from the high sounds and sends them off to their proper driver. Well, uh, with the DSP, it takes care of the signal filtering, so uh, there, there's, no DS, there's no separate crossover. Uh, what that means is we have the ability to dynamically adjust the crossover point. So that enables uh, something that's really cool, and I actually demoed it on my Linus Tech Tips channel, which is late night mode, which takes some of the sound that would normally be intended for the subwoofer and actually routes it through the satellites instead, which is another benefit of creating a high quality satellite, which can reproduce those low frequency sounds. Exactly, the satellites, uh, when, you, when you turn off the subwoofer and lower the crossover point, the satellites uh, sound like a 
pretty darn good 2.0 speaker system. Cool. Now, I've seen time and time again, I've seen countless products that are marketed as a gaming speakers or a gaming headset where basically they're saying the only thing that this could possibly sound good in is games because it's terrible for music and it's terrible for movies. Um, is there any technical reason why if you deliver a well-balanced package it can't sound good for all three? Of course not. If you get the audio right, if you make it have high fidelity and detail and accuracy across the entire band, of course it's going to sound great for games because it'll sound just like the game designer intended. Now, you talk about so-called uh, gaming-oriented audio, and this goes for speakers as well as headsets. So many times, uh, manufacturers fall into that trap, and they figure, well, gamers like bass, so we'll, we'll just boost up the bass. But then when you do that, you drown out other stuff. You, uh, you lose those, the great positional audio in, in the mid-bands, and it may sound great for the first 30 seconds, but when you start listening to your, uh, your lossless uh, music files of your high-quality recordings, you're, you're going to see why it's letting you down. Now, speaking of positional audio, which we talked about before already, uh, let's talk about the positioning of this speaker setup in the marketplace as a whole, regardless of whether it's uh, just PC or not. Sure. Now, as I said earlier, this is going to be the new reference standard for PC audio, period. Not PC gaming audio. This is going to compete with anything. There's a number of other uh, speaker systems in around the same price range. They're from... Uh, more, more mainstream brands, they're going for a wide variety of customers, uh, will beat them, frankly, right? Now, this is called the Gaming Audio Series because, you know, we're gamers. We know gamers, first and foremost, it's a great speaker system for everything, but with the, the gaming focus means we spent the extra time to make sure you just get that deep, visceral bass that really gets you right here and makes the gaming experience so exciting. Now, Dylan, the SP2500 is going to cost you about 250 bucks. So I have brought along for comparison a 2.0 PC speaker setup. Now it has a volume dial, a headphone jack, and a power switch features that I have noticed are also present on your product. And I'm going to go ahead and place them here for comparison. Now, tell me why it is that even though these speakers contain half as many drivers as your satellite speakers, and are about half the size, tell me why it is that they cost only about $5 and your speaker setup costs $250. Uh, are we paying $245 bucks for a really expensive subwoofer and control pod? Or just, just explain it to me. Why does this cost so much? Well, that's, uh, that's 50 times more price than the $5 speakers there, but you know what? It sounds 50 times better. But seriously, it's the, the quality and the craftsmanship. Um, a good example is, well, the, the satellites. Uh, the drivers, you have to source drivers that can handle the huge amounts of power that the satellites are getting. Now, that may seem obvious, but a lot of high-powered 2.1 PC speakers systems out there, you can't turn the volume past around 75% with some material. It just overdrives the drivers. The vendor, the, the company that designed it, has sourced drivers that simply can't handle the power load. Seems simple, but we've taken the time to do that. That means that you can run the SP2500 at 100% volume, and it sounds great. Not only that, but it's rated to run at 100% volume for two continuous days. You try that with some of the systems out there, and uh, bad things may happen. Not just the drivers, it's things like the nitrile rubber surrounds that go around the drivers. It took a lot of time engineering uh, so that these, uh, these speakers will last a long time. So at $250, how do you, as a customer, justify a setup like this? Well, Corsair customers, of course, are enthusiasts. The folks who are watching this video are enthusiasts. And if you're enthusiast about your graphics performance, your, your CPU, your memory, you've got to be enthusiastic about the audio. That's why the SP2500 delivers. It's a really high-quality audio system. Again, it's going to be the reference standard for PC audio for the next several years. And we expect our customers to keep this for, for several years through several system upgrades. Okay, so that brings us back to something that I wanted to discuss a little bit more. Now, you said that uh, 
A lot of the time when you label something as like uh, the best gaming headset, especially previously in the market before you guys sort of came in here, or the best gaming speaker setup, it was kind of like uh, debating who's the most talented Spice Girl in some cases. Now I just wanted to know, who do you think was the most talented Spice Girl? Well, well I hope none of the Spice Girls are watching this and sending me an angry... So, I doubt it. So who we had? We had Happy Spice and Dopey Spice and Sneezy... No, wait, Scary, Scary Spice and Baby... I think spice. There was Posh Spice. Posh Spice. That's shoot. the one that's married to. Um, that the soccer player. Right? That, that guy right. who gets paid lots of money to pay for to play for some failed American team. Does he actually play for them? I I'm actually, not sure. Okay. I don't watch soccer, so don't ask me. And then you can just fade this to black at the end. <laughs>